Welcome to Rebuilding a Stuart 5A Steam Engine, Part 4. And this is the bit you've all been waiting for, preparing and painting the engine. There's a lot of painting in this episode. So if you suffer from narcolepsy or any similar illness, it's time to turn off and watch something else. I really am no expert on the art of painting, but it seems to me to be common sense that you must prepare the parts you're going to paint before you paint them. If the parts that you are painting are misshapen, or if the castings and have lots of bits of flashing on them, when you paint the castings, they're really not going to look any better, except they'll be a different colour. If Leonardo da Vinci, instead of painting the Mona Lisa, had painted a picture of the Hunchback of Notre Dame, then it would not have looked like the Mona Lisa, if you get my drift. And Mona Lisa is a much better title for a painting than Modo Lisa, which of course is taken from the name Quasimodo. In case you're curious as to what I'm doing at the moment, I'm applying some lighter fuel, this is not gas of course, it's petrol, lighter petrol, to the main standard of the engine. This lighter fuel does two things, it degreases the part, it does not attack the paint, and as I've been sanding the existing paint to remove some previous strips from a previous painting, it's washing away any debris left on the old painted surface. As well as applying the lighter fuel to the painted surface, I also put some on the cloth, and I use this to wipe over the entire piece, at which point I notice there is a rough part, right at the bottom of the trunk guide. So I'm just using a file to remove all the rough edges. Then of course I will re-wipe the part with the cloth with the lighter fuel. Every time I find a problem I rectify it, but always wipe away the debris, because you do not want the debris to be in the new paint. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of times, I'm using lighter fuel petrol as a degreaser. You can also use white spirit, but do not use cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinners as it's called in the United States, because this will dissolve the paint. And I don't really want to remove this paint, as the paint is firmly attached to the casting. It's ideal as an undercoat for the next top coat. With the standard clean and ready to paint, I remove the crankshaft, wipe away the oil from the bearings, and now it's time to once again have another look at removing some excess paint from areas of this piece where there should not be any paint. Cleaning off this old paint is taking a long time. I'm beginning to be worried in case my lifespan is not long enough to do this, because I'm 64 next month and there's only death to look forward to at my age, really. I shouldn't say things like this, I know, and I may depress some viewers. But your spirits will be uplifted because very shortly I'm going to get my small paintbrush and paint all these components. Before I do that, I make sure that I put them on a piece of plywood. Each of these components sits on its own piece of plywood, that way I do not pick up any debris from the bench. With a painting alert warning clearly visible, I'm going to stop talking. And what I'm going to do instead is play some of my gentle soothing music over this section. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Oh no, hang on, there's more. I forgot about the top caps. Just these two small parts to paint and then life can continue as normal. So seriously now, thanks for watching, thanks for tolerating all the painting. 
and I'll be back very shortly with a more constructive episode.